In the previous video, we had a look at a basic example on how to implement the useState hook. In this video, let's take a look at another example. This time, how to set state based on the previous state value. Once again, we are going to be implementing a counter. But this counter will have buttons to increment, decrement and reset the count value. I'm going to begin by creating a new file in the components folder hook counter 2.js Within the file, I'm going to use the React snippet rfce to create a functional component. Next, we use the useState hook to create a state variable and the corresponding setter function. So count comma set count is equal to use state with a default value of initial count. Now we can add the JSX. Count is going to be count itself. And then we add the three buttons to reset, increment and decrement the count value. So for the reset button, on click is going to be an arrow function call set count passing in initial count as the argument this will set the count value back to zero next we have the increment button on click call set count and the argument is going to be count plus one similarly for decrement on click is going to be set count count minus one we can now include the component in app component hook counter 2 dot js if you save the files and take a look at the browser we must have the new counter i click on increment and the count increases click on decrement the count decreases and clicking on reset will set it back to zero now you might be wondering what is so special about this example? How does it differ from what we have seen in the previous video? Well, here's the thing. The current implementation and the way we incremented count value in the previous video, both are unsafe. Although it looks like it is working, it is not the right way to change the count value. Let me show you why with a very unlikely piece of code you would implement. I'm going to add another button that increments the count by a value of 5. Text is going to be increment 5. Then on click, let's call a function called increment 5. Now let's define this. Increment 5 is an arrow function and within the body, for let i is equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus, and we call set count, incrementing it by 1 every time. So rather than incrementing it by a value of 5, I'm simply looping it 5 times and incrementing by 1 every time. If we go back to the browser and test this out, click on increment 5, you can see that the count is still incremented by only one. The setCount method is reading a stale value of the count state variable. To overcome this, we need to use the second form of the setCount function. Basically, instead of passing in a value of the new state variable, we pass in a function that has access to the old state value. So setCount is going to accept a function that has access to the old count. So previous count is going to be the argument and the function body previous count plus one. So we pass in a function that has access to the old value and increment that by one. Now if we go back to the browser and test it out, increment five, you can see that the value increases by five. So anytime you need to update state value based on the previous state value, 
always go with the safer option of passing in a function that will set the new state value. Let me make the changes for increment and decrement buttons as well. So copy this, paste it here, and here, and change plus to minus. If you now take a look at the browser, you should see the counter still working perfectly fine. Alright, that is the second example. When you have to update state based on the previous state value, pass in a function to the state setter. Let me also quickly show you the class component equivalent. So if I go back to components and class counter 2.js, you can see that we have the increment count function. We call set state passing in a function. The function has access to the previous state which we use to calculate the new state. Again, if you're new to class components, don't worry about this. Now, we are not quite done with all the details of useStateHook. Let's take a look at another example in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to click on the bell icon for notifications.